Under normal circumstances, the casters will be getting pretty vicious over their predictions as it is effectively me and Frodan versus the world at this point in terms of caster predictions. There's a lot of us going with Ike, but this could still get funky. If Ike loses, he is not necessarily out due to the way the tiebreakers may or may not shake out. Yeah, and this match itself actually has a huge impact on those tiebreakers. So let's let's get a little bit of housekeeping out of the way while we have a moment. Uh, if you haven't been following at all, we have three players here who are already qualified for the World Championship through a previous seasonal championship. Those are Bunny Hopper, Viper, and Bloody Face. And depending on how many of those re-qualify in top four, they don't just get the spot again. That doesn't make any sense. So they then get passed down uh, to some of the other players via tiebreakers. If Bunny Hopper were to win this and take one of those top four spots for himself, that means we would have three matches of tiebreakers tomorrow after we've rounded out the tournament. If Bunny loses, we can have as few as one. That one tiebreaker would be uh, Yu Ying versus the loser of the game we have coming up between Roger and Definition. So this match, this game now with Bunny Hopper on a two to one lead, huge impact, not just in the career of these two players, but on the career of various other players in this tournament as well. Yeah, it really is a, a big deal. And I, you know, I have no doubts that all the other players in this top cut are sat with bated breath watching every single outcome of every single turn of this match as we get into game number four, Ike on the Priest once again, and Bunny Hopper on this Pirate Miracle Rogue. I think this is a bad matchup, Frank. It is when you get dealt the cleef hand. <laughs> also, just in general, double sap and a vile sign is it, gonna it, is gonna help. Y you know what? Yeah, this Sold. deck probably <laughs> wins this matchup. But stranger things have happened. And again, we did see Bunny Hopper struggle when he couldn't activate raiding party. So there is definitely a moment where you can run a little bit dry on resources on the small chance that you don't get Myra's or raiding parties active early on. We'll see how it goes so far. Super interesting as well, by the way. Bunny Hopper actually mulligans away the Cleef Hand. He throws away the prep, throws away the spell to go with it, just keeps the Van Cleef, uh, which says to me he feels so comfortable in this matchup. He doesn't want to do anything dumb like go all in, in Van Cleef, on Van Cleef and then just hit that one Shadow Word Death on Ike's side and potentially throw away what is a very, very strong matchup in general. Yeah, you really don't just... At this point, you don't really want to just get blown out by one card and then have nothing to do for the rest of the game. So... You know, he kept the Van Cleef, of course. He is on coin anyway. Yep. So I actually really like this uh, mulligan from Bunny Hopper. Ike might be making some early decisions Ooh. now based on the Shadow Visions. Let's see what he gets and let's see what he goes for. Straight away goes for the death. It's like, now I don't want to be blown out by one card called yeah. Van Cleef when my opponent's on the coin. Yes. My opponent is on coin, they kept a card, they didn't play that card on turn one. What could that card be? It could be things like Raiding Party or it could be Van Cleef. Those Myras. Are, yeah, those are, <laughs> those are all things that are very distinct possibilities. So Ike understands what's up. Shadow of Death, even outside of Van Cleef, is a pretty useful card in the matchup, right? Yep. Thinking of dealing with Captain Greenskin, who represents so much damage if it goes unchecked. Also, Ike, pretty heavy hand in terms of just the minions that are there. Velen and Maligos in hand, which hmm. he just doesn't really want. He wants to summon those in, in much e cheaper and more efficient ways. But the Grizzly will ask a question of Bunny Hopper, uh, and it will probably be gassed it pretty soon, as I imagine Ike is going to have to do some incredible things to not want to play that on turn five. Honestly, if I was queuing up against this rogue deck, and again, let me say I don't have a huge amount of experience with or against this particular rogue deck. But if you told me I had to have Mali and Velen in my hand, but in exchange I got to have a Shadow of Pain and a Witchwood Grizzly, I think I'd probably take that exchange. Okay. Okay. And I would, in exchange for that exchange, have two saps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm coming out of this deal very well. Well, that just means I've made a good deal. It does. Yeah. So many options. How Bunny Hopper handles these turns. These are normally the tricky turns. Do I dagger? Do I not? Do I go a bit heavier on the board? Do I hold the coin? All these are actually very hard questions to ask. It was one of the hardest things I found in the early days of Hearthstone was when and how do you use that dagger that Rogue has as a hero power? It's very difficult to manage. It does come that 6-6 six, six Van Cleef, which means that Shadow of Death is going to pay dividends for Ike. Sit around, taking this little bits of uh, chip damage 
participate in this wet noodle fight for a little bit longer with these one twos. These aren't any great threat to him. It's when things are going to start ramping up very soon. When he starts playing his Witchwood Grizzly and it starts getting sapped, that's when he's going to know he's got a real game on his hand. Right, luckily enough, for Ike, he does have Zilliax, which is sappable, of course, but it's already yeah. done its job when yeah. you've played it, so that's absolutely fine for him. And also, we have seen, you know, we talk a lot about how good this Rogue is versus the Priest. If Ike gets the big Spirit Lash, well, Rogue has a finite amount of resources, especially, and they're limited, especially with the lack of cold bloods. So one Spirit Lash that's almost acted, acts like a Reno in this deck a lot of the time, the hard reset might actually just push Bunny Hopper just too far away from being able to kill Ike. So it's doable. Mm -hmm. we, you know, maybe we're seeing selling this Rogue a little bit hard here, but the Priest can take this matchup and stabilize. <laughs> To me, this seems like as good a time as any to see what's up with that Witchwood Grizzly. Mm -hmm. Don't really have good Zilliac targets on the board, and it's also, crucially for me, it's a turn where you can afford to take a sap on your Witchwood Grizzly, and you're not getting punished too hard for it. It's only four more damage Ooh. coming through. Bear in mind as well, this rogue deck does not run Fungal Mancer, so yep. you are not playing into that, oh, well, it just drops Fungal and then oh. two shots me. And there's my Arisen. This is going to be... A sick decision, though. When Bunny Hopper plays this Myra's, the puzzle box has been handed to him, and he has to work it out from there. But that's all he has to work with. It's such a sick card, but mm. can be difficult to use in situations like this when your opponent can have such a heavy amount of sustain available to them late game. You see now, even with such a great sap target, in theory, in front of him, Bunny Hopper is considering. I mean, as he is wont to do, he overthinks everything, as he said himself uh, in the break, but so it's just nice. not, a, you know, it's not a fantastic sap, and I'm not actually surprised to see him try and load up more tempo. This is really one of the classic rules of playing tempo rogue, is don't sap a minion if you're not improving your po your ball position behind it, right? Like, sap was very early on thought to be a very bad <laughs> card because you zero for one to yourself. You didn't kill a card and you killed a card from yourself by expending a sap. Um, but then as people started to understand more about the concept of tempo in Hearthstone, people realized that if you could put a card back in your opponent's hand and develop so very aggressively behind that, you did effectively kill that card for two mana right. because you created board positions where they weren't able to just play it down again. Yeah, you start to read sap in different ways, right? So now because this green skin's on board, say the board state exists the same on Bunny Hopper's side, mm -hmm. the card reads two mana, enable X damage, which is obviously very, very important when especially for Bunny Hopper now, he can do that twice and does does that X damage twice just kill your opponent? Well, in this deck, quite often it does. So with that eternal servitude draw from Ike, I want to start getting some of my minions dead or close to dead, which in my mind incentivizes me to remove that green skin from the board, uh, potentially using Zilliax and the trade from the Witchwood Grizzly. That leaves the Witchwood Grizzly at 3-1. Really, really, really invites Bunny Hopper to kill it instead of sapping it from the board. Same with uh, with the uh, Zilliax that'll be so comfortable on board. And that way you can start getting that res train going. Yep, got a little bit of a different route, just holding on to the Zilliax. Maybe that's just because he feels his life total is safer now and as you said the sapping of the zilliax as well isn't something that bunny hopper ever wants to do unless it literally creates lethal yeah well my so the reason i want to play the zilliax uh with such urgency here is not because i was worried about health total from ike it's just because i want it in that res Dead. pool yeah, very yeah, quickly yeah. and then i have oh, options man. uh ike has options every time he goes for eternal servitude he he can choose do i need a big taunt or is there a nice juicy three three on the board that i want to send a zilliax into until the Zilliax gets played and died, he doesn't give himself those options when he does play Eternal Servitude. Right. Palmy wondered whether he was going to Shadow Word Pain the Bear after the hit into the green skin, <laughs> to, be complete, to be completely honest. So I, I was going to bring it up, but I do often restrain myself as to what stupid plays I suggest. That's genius. <laughs> Can't zap it if it's dead. It's Ike level thing. When kill it so it's dead goes too far. <laughs> oh, and you start to see just like the, the, the crazy levels of damage output you right. get out of nowhere. And you, there's not even been a raiding party. Obviously, it does have green skin. But there's no shadow blades been played yet, which is normally a huge source of damage in itself. Mm -hmm. And next turn, it's 
potentially likely that Bunny Hopper can just Myra's into lethal. Yeah, and I think that's what that yeah, turn was about. Like, you saw really kind good. of an eviscerate just very recklessly thrown away at <laughs> the face, but that's a card out of his hand that then gets replaced by a different card when he Myra's. You know, he replaces those resources later on. Now the Zilliac does come down from Ike. And oh. Bunny Hopper again. I mean, Bunny Hopper. I mean, backstab's great. Don't get me wrong; it's a great answer to Zilliac's. But the one way, when you're playing an aggro deck against this matchup, the one thing you fear is just Zilliac's in the res pool. It's it's just so difficult to deal I, with. Right, but what I'm thinking right now is that backstab enables Bunny Hopper one to Myra's, which I think is 100% oh. correct here. Look at the I'm buffs on the weapons, which is insane. It means you can play the Dread Cell Corsair, and then also he has Sap and Vile Spine next turn. Does he need to play the Corsair? He just killed a Lyra. A nice juicy target for the Lyra to go into. So let's see if he yeah, has lethal through Zilliax. the... Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, you're right. The Zilliax. So if the Zilliax comes down, he, uh, Ike would heal back up to 12. And then with a six attack dagger, eight, nine... Le yeah, okay, he has lethal through that right. happening anyway. Does he have lethal through two of them, though? No, that's the scary oh part my. now. Double Servitude bringing back the double Zilliax. He does have Leroy, Deckhand, Sap. He has Prep as well, which is going to help just get that Sap off maybe a little bit easier. Wait, no, wait. So we can Leroy, Prep, Sap, Vile Spine. That's what? lethal, right? Leroy, oh, sorry, Spine see, keep, is 10 mana. I keep thinking he's on 10. I apologize. <laughs> Take it all back. So you can go Prep, Sap, Vile Spine, South Sea, Deckhand. Uh, prep doesn't even do anything there. Well, you, you want to play Hench Clan, right? Well, I mean, not if you're directly just looking for lethal. Mm. I'm still fishing for lethal. Nah, I've, I've stopped fishing. Okay. I'm not caught anything, and I'm going home. Right. Ordering a takeaway instead. Yeah, I that one, Deckhand the other. He goes to 16, and then you have Leroy plus 6, <laughs> 12, oh 13, 15. I've found 15, I think. I don't think he can prep that foul spine. He knows the Grizzly's in hand. That's true. How does he as punch well. through a grizzly? Well, I mean, if he was going to get direct lethal. Oh, then, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. So, sorry, I'm saying, like, as we now play the game. Mm -hmm. I think I found one off by healing him back up to 16 and then dealing 15. But like, one off is very much not good enough. Mm. Yeah. This is the big question of Myra's is it enough? Radiant Party, a big whip on that draw as well. Radiant Party just does nothing. That's a minus one card. Ike's going down Spirit to nine. Lash. Ike needs Spirit Lash. Didn't look like one to me, but was it pain? Oh, it was death. So that is a fresh dagger, correct? Yes. Yeah, so that's just a one attack dagger before anyone gets any crazy ideas. But already that's what, 11 is available and he can heal up to 11. Hmm. He can heal to 13 with the Vellum. But doesn't gain the taunt. Mm-hmm. Which we know is better. Yes. It appears Ike does wow, as well. Such a heads up play. Oh my. That is, that is impressive. And now this is scary because, again, Bunny Hopper wants to deal with this. He doesn't want to put damage into it, but he doesn't also want to sap it because, he, again, he knows the Witchwood Grizzly is there. Does sapping it playing the Hench Clan make the numbers add up better? So if he saps, he plays Hench Clan. He has three cards, so Grizzly will be nine. Three nine. He has, and then he can only get Leroy. Nine through. would go through. Leroy would connect. Yeah. yeah. Wait, no, is that enough with the double Hench Clan buff over two turns? Well, he'd also Ike would also be able to. I mean, okay, from Bunny Hopper's perspective, there's, Ike, there's yeah, one Ike, in hand, right, but Ike right. can play two. Right, right, yeah, sure. But also Ike heals, so the daggers get completely negated but then re-added to the hench clan. Mm -hmm. This is on a razor's edge right now. If this Velen's left alive, Ike has game-winning draws from the top of his deck. Hmm. I'm trying to work out. There's so many weird things like, does he have a Leroy now and ping the two uh, dragons with the with the one, two, and the one, and the dagger. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think this is the the best chance you give yourself because you all you push six and then have six to help with the grizzly that right. you know is there. 
and then you push four, five, six, you push seven next turn through this. But there's two of them. Yes. Also, Grizz is on way more health as well. Yep. Bunny hop up. He understands on, yeah, that that I've... is going to lock him out. And I oh. in a game that went all the way down to the finest of margins.